I'm Nikki Payne, I'm 18 and I'm from King's College. I'm quite interested because I originally saw the commercial side as my mum was a flight attendant, so I thought I'd have a check out of the Air Force side of being a pilot. That's great Nicola because there's a lot to learn about flying for the New Zealand Air Force and flying officer Aaron Lloyd is going to get you started. Hi Nikki. Hi, nice to meet you. You too, my name's Aaron, welcome to Whanua Point. Cool. Uh, here's your uniform. Awesome. Are you interested in being in the Air Force, Nick? Yeah, quite interested in flying and being a pilot and all that. Oh, great. Well, let's, um, let's go put a flight plan in the system and get going. Sweet. There is a whole lot of work to be done before a plane like the C-130 Hercules even gets off the ground. So Aaron takes Nicola to base operations to prepare a flight plan. Okay, well normally if we were going up on a flight uh, in New Zealand, this is one of the reference maps we use. This yep. is the North-South uh, Airways chart. The chart identifies the highways of the sky, and pilots use them to plot their course. They consult satellite imaging to check weather patterns they will encounter on the way. What's the worst weather condition that you guys can find? Uh, the worst weather for us uh, taking off would be um, a zero foot cloud base, 800 metres whiz. So not so, much puts you off. <laughs> uh, not really, no, just need the 800 metres whiz so you can see the runway in front of you, yep. and uh, the cloud can be right down to the deck. And with all their decisions made, the course information is then fed into the air traffic control system so that their flight can be coordinated with all the other flights around New Zealand. Preparation for a flight generally depends on what the type of flight is, whether or not it's a training flight, um, a tasked flight in, uh, in support of a mission, or a tactical flight. Aaron flies the C-130 Hercules, which has a wingspan of over 40 metres and a maximum speed of 610 kilometres per hour. The plane has a flight ceiling of 10,000 metres and can travel 3,800 kilometres without refuelling. Well, look here, this is the uh, flight deck of the C-130 Hercules. Cool. You see on the left there is where the captain sits, yep. uh, co-pilot sits on the right. Uh, the seat here is where the flight engineer sits and the seat here is where the navigator sits. What is the Hercules mostly used for? Mostly used for transporting cargo and uh, and all people. Why don't you take a seat in the co-pilot's seat there. Cool. Co-pilot's job to pre-flight the aircraft, so we'll go through what needs to be done. Yep. Just making sure that the lights are all set up uh, for the cockpit, yep. for what we need. Uh, moving across, getting uh, oxygen. Okay. Check. Weird. <laughs> I've always wanted to fly the Hercules, so I'm uh, interested in the, in the number of operations that uh, the C-130 performs all over New Zealand and all over the world and it really is an aircraft that uh, I think goes everywhere and uh, does everything. Well Nikki, this is the cargo compartment of C-130. We carry 80 troops down the back here, 80 Ooh. people. Also, be, also can be configured to carry equipment or a combination of equipment and personnel. We can fit to drive on vehicles, pallets, mm -hmm. uh, even an Iroquois helicopter down the back. Huh? The Hercules aircraft are also used for parachute drops which requires great skill from the pilot as they often occur at night and from low altitudes. But to get that good, they need to keep their skills sharp and Flying Officer Matt Ferris is doing pre-flight checks for a training flight to Gisborne. Hi Nikki. Hi, nice great to meet you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Matt Ferris, uh, I'm the co-pilot today and uh, we're just going on a training flight out of Whanuapai. We're going to go to Gisborne, do an instrument approach there for training. We'll do a stop and go, so we'll stop the aircraft on the runway, turn around, take off again. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you've got any questions, please ask. I think the challenges of the Hercules is uh, the integration of the entire crew, bringing everyone together. It's an entire crew. You can't get the aircraft airborne with any one person. You need the whole crew. And uh, working together as a team uh, can be uh, can be quite a challenge. Got to like be flying. Like, it's pretty easy because I've got to be water pilot. So let's do most of the work right now. <laughs> Nikki is sitting in the engineer's seat, and it's the engineer's job to manage the engine power and fuel consumption. The navigator sets the course, the pilot and co-pilot fly the plane, and the load master looks after the cargo. And they all like to have a bit of fun with each other. My favourite part is, is um, the people I work with. <laughs> I was very close to saying that. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> Got the wrong crew for that, yeah. eh? <laughs> Dead structural staff are warm and friendly. <laughs> it's a loving, positive environment to learn in. Yep. That's, that's the official answer I think I'll stick with. A good Air Force pilot is uh, one that 
is continuously learning and improving and looks at his or her flying uh, from an outside perspective and uh, continually wants to improve. The Hercules regularly lands on unprepared runways and even the Antarctic ice, but today they descend towards Gisborne Airport for the point of this training trip, an instrument approach and stop and go landing. They don't even get out of the plane and are soon on their way back to Whanuapai. And although he's got a navigator sitting behind him, the co-pilot has a good grip on where they are in the sky at all times. A lot of mass involved? <laughs> uh, but a lot. It's pretty simple what, what mass is involved. It's not nothing hard or anything. There's two ways. You can either work it out or you can just guess something. Yeah. And usually they're pretty close to what you're meant to take. So if it goes horribly wrong, you can blame it on bad mass or a bad guess. Usually one and the same. Question. The joking is put aside as the team gets ready for the serious business of landing a 36 ton plane in low visibility conditions. Just one of the many challenges a RNZ AF pilot will face. Well I'm looking forward to future upgrades and future challenges. I'm looking forward to getting into to low level tactical flying in the, in the Hercules. A combination of uh, airdrops and uh, combat uh, onloads and offloads, uh, working in um, shorter un unprepared strips, doing a, a, a variety of missions, dropping stuff out, out the back. I think that's uh, pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Oh, I think Nick, Nikki's uh, prepared to give it a go. I think that's, uh, that's definitely the evidence. She's uh, keen to give it a try, and I think that would uh, a quality that would uh, suit, suit her well. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed getting to see the ins and outs of being a part of the Air Force, and it was really exciting to be up in the Hercules. To enter the Royal New Zealand Air Force, you must be at least 17 years old, a New Zealand citizen, or have New Zealand permanent residency if you are a citizen of the UK, USA, Australia or Canada. You will need 18 NCEA Level 2 credits in English, Mathematics and a Science subject. Physics is preferred. Pilots need to be self-disciplined, know how to lead and work well under pressure. They must have a good level of fitness, health and strength, including good hearing, eyesight and normal colour vision. You also need to be given security clearance, so any criminal convictions you have will be looked at.